guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Big Bold Birthday Stamps and Dies. I'm also going to be using this Wonderful Wishes, but I'm only going to be using this the die set. And then this is an older one. This is the Coneflower Lovely Layers. And then this is the Celebrate um, Rubber Stamp Background. So the if you haven't seen the Wonderful Wishes, um, die set. It actually has a stencil that goes with it for you to be able to stencil these beautiful florals onto this cake. But I wanted to use it a little bit differently because you guys know I like using my products a little bit more um, versatile. So before we get too far along, this is part of the Celebrate Release video hop for Honeybee celebrating their nine year anniversary, if you can even believe that. Um, and they will be doing a giveaway of two $50 gift cards. So make sure you continue hopping along. If you're just stopping on my channel to see mine, I have another video over on the Honeybee channel. I actually got to kick off the hop. <laughs> um, so that one is uh, instructional. So here I wanted a to do a white on white background. I didn't want it to be plain. Um, I wanted there to be a little something going on in the background. And so I decided to do some white on white heat embossing. So I have some Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock and I'm inking this up with the Brilliant White Pigment Ink from Honeybee. Now in order to use these red rubber stamps in your Misty, you do wanna go ahead and remove that foam insert because the red rubber stamps have the foam built in. And right out the gate, we had a, a situation, and here it is. Okay, normally I stamp mine twice, um, and it actually picked up my paper up off my sticky mat. So rather than remove it, I decided I was going to use a scrap piece to just lay it over top and hold it steady with one hand and smooth it over with the other. Since I wasn't going to be able to get a second impression, this would ensure that I was going to get a good impression and then um, I used my white detail embossing powder to heat emboss with. Now you can see <laughs> I have used this quite a bit. My jar is about halfway gone so I do have to dump my excess back into my jar in order to be able to do it a second time. I always preheat my heat gun before I bring it to my paper um, just to make sure that it's not, you know, warping or anything. And especially when you have this much embossing going on in the background, it's definitely more at risk for warping. So preheating your gun will be helpful. And then what I like to do is I like to get one corner, um, like I heat it all over, but I like to get one corner melted. And then once that cools, it gives me something to kind of grab onto since this embossing does go edge to edge. Um, and obviously you could, you know, cut your piece a little bit bigger, but I, <laughs> quite honestly, I don't want to waste the cardstock. So I'm just being real with y'all. So this is the cake portion. And like, because it cuts out separately, I do think you could use a lot of different stencils or 3D embossing folders or whatever to decorate your cake. But I decided to keep it really simple. Um, and I was just going to do so a watercolor background. Now I'm showing you the whole process, even though it doesn't end up looking like this, because I think it's important to share kind of the, um, the evolution of a card, if you will. And so originally I was kind of creating this look of like this watercolor look, and you do see these on cakes, um, you know, that was like this kind of gradient, which was from villainous potion to seedless preserves, to pick raspberry, to mustard seed. And, um, I'm being, you know, I'm just kind of like putting it down in a line. It wasn't dark enough. Watercolor always dries back lighter. And so I decided to do a second layer and then I did add, uh, you know, some spatters of, you know, each of the colors. And then I also added just a little bit more water as well. Um, and then I kind of set that, uh, that aside so I could wipe up my extra pigment and then I did dry it down. Now I knew from the very beginning, that's why you saw me cut the base of the cake holder out of brushed gold cardstock. I knew that I wanted to add um, some gold accents here. And this again is something that's super popular in cake decorating. I don't know if I'm the only one who pays attention to that stuff, but it pops up on my feed and I think it's really interesting. Um, 
but like you'll see gold foils um, or, you know, gold worked into like the pearls or, you know, different things like that. So I decided that I was going to do some gold spatters with my perfect pearls. And then I was going to give myself kind of like a painted watercolor edge at the bottom. I also did some spatters onto my white on white background just to tie the background in. Now, the vast majority of those spatters on the white background, you aren't actually going to be able to see uh, because our cake is so large. Um, but that's okay. So here's me painting in the bottom layer, just again, very organic shapes. I'm kind of following, um, you know, some of the uh, spatters that are close to each other and just, you know, working to connect them. And I think that this is a really, really fun way to decorate this cake. And I would absolutely recommend doing it. And may I may do it again in the future, but it ain't going to end up looking like this, guys, because <laughs> sometimes it just don't work out. So for my cone flower, which I don't know if you guys um, remember this or not, but this is actually, I think, the very first Lovely Layer set that they came out with. So this is like an oldie but a goodie. So if you've just come around to Honey Bee in the last, you know, maybe like year or so, me, this isn't one that you've seen. But I really love that it is the side view of a cone flower, and I thought it would be the perfect little cake topper. So you know, maybe where the stencil that comes with it is a little bit more um, whimsical. This is definitely going to give us a more elegant look. And I like the texture that the ink smushing provides to the die cuts. And so that's what you see me doing here. Um, and for the most part, that second layer of the center, you really can't see too much, if any of it at all, quite honestly. Um, but that's not true for the petals. You can see all of them. And this was um, me kind of just playing around with it. I've originally put down too much water, which was great because my paper was really, really saturated, but it didn't give me a lot of texture, which honestly was the whole reason I was doing this. So you're going to see that as I'm kind of going back through, um, that I'm going to end up doing it twice just so I can get that texture that I'm looking for. Um, this is very one note. It's like all the colors merged together, and that's going to happen if you use a lot of water. You're going to get a smoother look, and you're going to get a more even color. Um, I definitely wanted it to be a little bit more um, textured, and so I will end up doing them twice. Now, for these two top layers, I did want them to be a little bit lighter, um, so I did add even more water. <laughs> I did add even more water to make them really nice and light. Uh, and here I'm going back in and seeing if I can dip in. Um, now that I've absorbed most of the water with the two other layers, I can get some more texture here. Now I'm going to go in and this time I'm just going to use the picked raspberry and I did like that, but it wasn't like matching the background. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm super matchy matchy. Um, but this is a really forgiving technique. So you can just keep dipping it in, you know, as long as you're using watercolor paper, you can pretty much dip it in as many times as you want. Now here I added in some seedless preserves, but I did not add in any more water. And that did give me a lot more texture. For the greens, I'm using um, the mowed lawn and a little bit of rustic wilderness. And for the most part, I am just going to dip my leaves in and get a nice kind of even base color. And then I will go and I will dip them a second time. Now I did four, but I only ended up using three. Um, so the other one I can just tuck into my little coneflower um, set and just leave that for, you know, maybe the next time I'm, I'm putting a project together. Um, so here again, I, you know, cleaned that up and then this time... I did a little bit of rustic wilderness, a little bit of water, and uh, a lot more mowed lawn. And for these, I'm just very quickly dipping them in just to get that created texture. Um, last summer or the summer before, I did this with the strawberries, the Lovely Layers strawberries. And it's just a really nice, fast way to add texture and color to your die cuts. Um, 
So I cannot leave well enough alone ever. I always have to add more dimension. And so once these are dry and you do want to make sure you wait until they're dry, I am going to go in with my Copic markers and add uh, some more color. So I like to layer my layers. I like to lay them on top of each other um, so that I can see where the shading will go. That's why you see how I marked the one in the bottom. Um, now that layer is underneath, so I don't need to do any more coloring there uh, just to mark that shadow area. It's going to be easier to see with the flowers if you've never seen me do this before. So I start with my base layer. I will lay the next layer down on top of here, and then I will go in with my lightest color and I will trace around that. Now the reason I choose my lightest color is so that way I am not getting the edges um, of the die cut that sits above it with my darkest color. But in pieces like this where you already have some color down, it can make it challenging to see. I probably should have done it with my mid-tone because um, you'll see there's two different times with petals that I totally miss them. I have to go back in uh, and this is why it's so important to check your work. Um, so I'm starting with my darkest color. And these back ones I know are going to be very dark. I always take um, either my lightest color, if that's what's going to be on the edges, or, um, you know, whatever mid-tone in here. I'm going to have my yellow centers. But you can see when I line it up here, I missed that petal down at the bottom. I missed it completely. So it's good that we double check, because otherwise I'd be at the stage of putting my whole flower together, and then I would be super sad that this petal did not match. <laughs> so I am like, I, th I was like, how did I miss that? Did I just, did I use the wrong die cut? But no, I checked them and it was just me. I just missed it. It it happens. Uh, so I'll just lay that back down in place and then mark it and then that way I can go back in and shade that one little petal. Um, I do have a tendency, especially for these like uh, back petals, you know, to be a little bit more heavy handed with my darks because these are like the under underneath of our floral. Um, and then again, I checked it one more time. So here I'm doing the same thing with my lightest color and I'm going to forget that little top piece on the right. I will forget to color it. But anyway, um, so if you have not, I've actually done, I think, two videos already with some of the things um, from the new release because I don't know about you guys, but when I get like new things, I am super excited to use them. And actually me and Dawn were just talking about this, but like sometimes it's almost overwhelming. Like you have so many choices. Um, so I like to break them down um, and look at them, you know, like for, for this one, um, looking at the wonderful wishes. So I've got the stencil, I've got the die. Okay, you know, I really like that, but I like my cards to look different. Um, than everybody else's. That's just a thing I have. I want my cards to look like my cards and I want your cards to look like your cards because everybody has their own individual talent. And so I was like, how can I use this differently? And so by leaving the stencil off and just using the dies, um, it gives us a lot more, uh, like a lot more versatility and a lot more options to work with. And you know that I love florals. So it was a natural to, you know, natural inclination to kind of pair it with one of the lovely layers. And this isn't the only one that would work. I went with the coneflower, but you could use the peony or the pansies. Um, you could even probably use the water lilies. There's just like so many good options um, to dress up your cake. And in real life, you know, I love to um, bake. Let me just apologize for this one where I've gotten off the screen. I, I do genuinely apologize. I was like so in the moment, I didn't realize that I was completely off screen. It gets better on the next one, I promise. Just hang tight. Um, but in real life, I like to decorate cakes. Um, and so maybe that is one of the reasons why I'm drawn to a set like this. In fact, just for Easter, I made a carrot cake and I haven't made a carrot cake in years. And the one that I did make, um, I dated this guy, uh, 
and his mom was very much like no sugar, no additives. And so like when he packed his lunch, he had to pack his lunch with peanut butter and honey sandwiches. He wasn't allowed to have jelly. Like that's what I'm talking about. So I had used her recipe to make him a birthday cake and it was carrot cake and the sweetener was honey. And so I don't think that's like a traditional carrot cake, but anyway, um, so this time around when I made it, uh, it was like a hybrid. <laughs> it was like a half box mix, half from scratch kind of thing. Um, for the leaves, I did choose, you know, more yellow greens uh, because I thought that they would pop really nicely with the like pinkish purples. And all of the lovely layers have uh, embossing detail in them. So I'm just kind of following that embossed detail. And then where these flowers have a little bit of a ruffle, or these flowers, these leaves have a little bit of a ruffle, I just added some extra shading there to kind of enhance that shape a little bit. And then work from my darkest out to my lightest color. I did them all the same, but I'm only going to show you just the one of them. Um, but anywho, so for this one, I did have to shred... Uh, the carrots and it had crushed pineapple in it which is different um, there was also some recipes that called for like coconuts to go like shredded coconut to go in there um, some of them had raisins or pecans or walnuts um, because I was feeding this to my kids I left the nuts out my my little jelly bean is too young to have um, those like large even though they're chopped they're still pretty large and uh, my peanut will not eat them so I left those out. My mother-in-law doesn't like raisins, so I left those out. And the coconut I left out, honestly, just because I forgot it. <laughs> so um, it still ended up being fine. It was a very uh, moist cake, which is the only instance in which that word is acceptable. Um, and so when I was trying to put on my cream cheese frosting, I... Um, I kept running into the problem of it pulling up my cake. Like it was literally pulling up the layers of my cake. Uh, so it was not the prettiest cake I ever made. And, but it was, it was yummy. It was still tasty. Like 10 out of 10 would make again. The bite, the box mix you use is spice cake, which totally makes sense. Um, so here we're putting the uh, flour together. Um, so I layered them all up and they all line up. Uh, I did have issues where I wasn't paying good enough attention to one of the petals kind of in the bottom left. And so it doesn't line up perfectly, but is it close enough for government work? Yes, it is. But because I didn't line that up, I can see that I have some empty areas in between. So rather than try to pull the whole thing apart, I'm just going to go in and get those lighter areas with my RV69 and I'm going to call it a win. Sometimes it just be like that. So for the sentiment, I wanted to uh, make sure that I was using that same gold to tie everything in. These are so great. These big, bold birthday sentiments. I love that they're all kind of different shapes and, you know, they all, they have the coordinating dies. So a lot of them have to do with like make a wish and I wasn't using the candles. So I chose this one that's a celebrate your big day with cake. And um, I am doing this on some more watercolor paper because I knew that I wanted to color it to be like the same color of the cake so that it would sit on top like it would be popped up and you'd be it would be more legible but it would still blend into my cake base almost like as if somebody had piped it in gold onto our cake right so I'm gonna use its coordinating die to cut it out I also cut out a second um die in white and here's how we're looking and it's not terrible but I didn't love the cake base. I just didn't love it with the flower. So I decided that I was going to make it a little bit darker. So first I used a lot of seedless preserves um, and then a little bit of picked raspberry. And it became pretty apparent once I dipped this little guy back in that it was going to be harder to get good coverage. So I just accepted the fact that I was going to have to go direct to paper, which is fine. So I sprayed down my paper and then I went in with my um, ink pads and I just kind of swiped them on. Uh, darker at the bottom with the seedless preserves, lighter at the top with the picked raspberry. And then I did the sentiments the same way. Um, because again, I, you know, I want them to blend in with each other. Then I added more water to make sure that the pigment was going to be flowing and it was still going to look watercolor-ish. 
Um, I added a little too much water to the um, sentiment portion, so I ended up having to blot up a little bit of that and then go back in with some more pigment. Now, the first time around when we did the Gold Perfect Pearls, we did it when the um, when it was dry. So there was no like blending or blooming of the Perfect Pearls. This time around, I decided to go ahead and do the spatters while it was still wet so that the gold would kind of bloom out. Now, it's not soaking wet. It's not like bubbled up. Um, so for the most part, it's going to stay where it lands. It's just going to bloom out just a little bit. I did concentrate more of the Perfect Pearls on the bottom and like lighter spatters as it came up. But you can see as it dried, because I had to use so much water, it is warped. What I do in those situations is I just run it back through my die cutting machine, um, just like I would if I was die cutting it. I just add a shim and then I roll it, you know, once or twice through and usually it does flatten out. I did the same thing with the sentiment. Here is where I'm adding it to its additional die cut so that it will be popped up and now we can start building our card. I wanted the whole thing to be raised and so I'm using the larger but thinner foam dots from Honeybee and I just trimmed these so that I could put them underneath my cake base. The um, the square of, or the rectangle of the cake, <laughs> um, I decided to use uh, just more traditional foam tape so that way it would be all even and solid. I wouldn't have to worry about um, it, you know, being pushed down in certain areas because it is still, you know, just a little bit warped. Not as bad as it was, but just a little bit. So I'm going to add this to the bottom once I take the release paper off and then the same thing with the cake. Now you can see, you know, we don't have a ton of room at the top, but you definitely could get, you know, some different ones. You also have the option to, you know, make your cake a little bit smaller too if you wanted to use one of the other lovely layers to do a similar look. I'm just going to adhere my coneflower a little bit further down on the cake and here um, I should have put it on beforehand and I didn't. Uh, it does need a little foam dot right underneath the center um, so that everything will be level. So I'm going to add that in and then I will put it back at the top. Now I realize there isn't a lot of contrast between my flower and my cake. Um, so it it is looking very pink, purple, magenta-y right now. But... I think the addition of the sentiment with the gold will help break it up, and then also the leaves do help break it up. Um, so I don't, if I had to do it all over again, would I make them as close in color? I'm not sure. I don't mind the card, um, but I do wish that there was maybe just a smidge more contrast between the two, but that's okay. It's certainly not worth um, complaining about. I just like sharing my thought process with you guys so that you don't feel like you're alone if you're looking at your card wondering if you should have done something differently. <laughs> um, so here I'm going to tuck two leaves in on one side and this one I am going to go ahead and glue down. I know that I'm going to need some more foam tape to kind of secure it on the um, like make it flush on the right hand side but I'm going to do that after the glued part is already in place. What were we talking about? Oh, the carrot cake. So yeah, so I just could not get it to stick. It just kept pulling up the top of my cake, which sometimes happens if your cake is a little bit too moist. It's better than a dry cake, honestly. So even though I tried putting it in the freezer, um, I just could not make it stop. So I just accepted that it wasn't going to be the prettiest cake I ever made. And, you know, that was okay. It was still good. The cream cheese frosting, still a win. Um, and then... Uh, when do I, I don't even know when I have my next cake. I guess probably Peanut's birthday will be my next cake, but he hasn't told me what his theme is yet. So stand by for that one. I'll, I'll let you know once I know what that cake's going to be. But anyway, this is, I think, why maybe I was gravitated towards the set. I think it's super pretty. So I used some more of that gold perfect pearls to just kind of dot it onto the center of the cone flower, again, tying in that gold. Um, and then I did add some shimmer, to just some lines of it along the um, actual petals of the flower. 
And I also used, this is from the last release. This is actually the vintage pearl stickers. Um, I used the kind of old gold looking ones. Uh, pearls are again, something that you see very often in cake decorating. So they totally made sense here. And then um, that's it. So you can see that wonderful gold shine there. I really like the way that this card came out, especially when you see it in the light. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time. Please continue on the hop, um, you know, seeing all the wonderful inspiration that my teammates have. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.